Cool. Today is April 12th of 2021. And this is my Umarex um, customer service um, just video. So let me explain what, what happened and uh, what's going on. So if you guys are familiar with the channel, I have a TR50. Um, and it had a trigger spring that exploded. <laughs> and uh, it turns out if you crack into it, Umarex says you have no warranty and they won't send you any parts or anything. Um, cool. Uh, I picked up this, which is the Walter PPQ. I love this thing. I really do. I really love this thing. It feels great. It's got a great action. I have three total mags with it. Um, it's fantastic. I highly advise people get this. Problem happened today. <laughs> so I, I'm doing what's called one-in-ones. It's, it's a training maneuver where you're just practicing on reloads. So you have one in here and one in another mag. And you load and then fire. And let me show you what happens. Now this should be cocked. There's no CO2, but the firing pin should engage. Nothing. There's a reset. Nothing happens. So I called Umarex and I said, hey, um, I was just doing normal trading. And um, what do I need to do? I'm, I, I'm like, I can tell that there's three pins here. I can tell that there is a screw, a Phillips head screw here. And that's all that holds the lower assembly together to the upper assembly. And the response was like, don't crack into it. That will void your warranty. I did that once before. Uh, not again. So, uh, Umarex, let me bring up that. Umarex. Has this form, and unfortunately, okay, um, it's not really. All right, so I'm gonna bring me down to this corner over here. So Umarex has this form, and I wanted to just kind of read it to you guys and. So the information below must be provided in order for your item to be considered for repair or replacement. Please fill out and place in the box with your item. Remove all aftermarket accessories as we will not be responsible for those items. The consumer is responsible for return shipping and handling on most warranty repairs. If a label is provided for return, uh, of the garden, and we find the problem is a result of abuse, the customer will be responsible for the reimbursement cost. So that is this upper paragraph here. By the way, this whole PDF is editable, except for the actual places you need to fill out, which is silly, this should be an E form. Down here, quote charges, and I'm assuming that if I were to have this repaired, um, they would quote charges here. And then it, obviously I accept quote charges and approve of repairs up to the amount initial here. I'm not doing any of that. That, that. This whole box right here, I'm not doing anything. What annoys me is this, if you prefer a fast turnaround time on your repair slash replacement and there are anticipated fees, then you are welcome to provide a check or money order to cover those charges. This is not required. We can turn guns around in more timely manner if not waiting payment. Okay, and then the last part, you must include a copy of your dated purchase receipt for warranty consideration. Receipt must be computerized cash register receipt. We do not accept handwritten receipts. All items must be evaluated for warranty claims as described in warranty section of the manual. Um, 
Now with the paperwork that I yet to print off, again, print off, because we're not in 2021, I guess that's all this is. Um, yep, uh, I printed off my order from Amazon. Um, also, because I don't print a shipping label, I printed my own uh, shipping label to ship this out. Um, I have emailed, or I've been in contact with a gun tech at Umrex. Uh, his name is Marcus. I'm not going to give out his last name. I have his email pulled up over here on my second screen. Uh, please fill out the attached form, uh, then send the magazine slash gun proof of purchase and the form to the address in the bottom and we'll get the issue resolved. Now I'm hope I'm hopeful that this gets resolved. When I talked to Marcus, he said it sounds like they'll just probably send out a replacement. Um, what sucks is that they have to do that in the first place. Um, let me explain. So I understand this is a $189 marker. So obviously uh, not cheap cheap, like not like 20 or 30 bucks but not expensive. So something like this is obviously um, meant to not be kind of worked on, but at the same time, you market this as uh, training for engagement, T4E. Um, and you should be able to trust your training weapon as much as you trust your firearm to perform. Now, this whole base, this, the, the FDE portion of this, where it's actually plastic, minus this little back strap here that has the... <sighs> this is one printed form. Now, all Boomerx had to do from a manufacturing sense is keep the takedown here. On a normal Walter, this is a takedown, so you can just hold this at half, pull this down, let that go, and the whole slide slides forward. Um, and then you have your trigger assembly and your slide separate. In this, the trigger assembly, the slide, uh, the barrel, and then, excuse me, the barrel shroud, and then the actual barrel itself that comes into um, the magazine, all of this is one piece. Everything that's black on here, except for this, this drop down is one piece so all the mechanics everything that actually happens is here there's a little uh, slide in here so when you actuate the trigger there's literally um, a, uh, an armature that pulls like this just pulls in this direction and then engages the hammer by the time you get to here two things happen at once the barrel is fully in battery and then the hammer at a uh, set at the same time, flips up and hits the, the firing pin, which then releases the gas and shoots everything forward. It's not that terribly complicated. Um, honestly, this should be a takedown right here. It absolutely should be, so that people can actually work on these and not have to send them off to Arkansas. At my cost, by the way. So that's a, that's a problem unto itself. So, um, we'll find out what happens. I'm going to pay this once, and I'm already pissed. Um, but yeah, I'm really annoyed about that. So we'll get this sent off to Umarex, um, and I'll keep you guys informed. But if I was a law enforcement agency looking at these for, like, uh, or their Smith & Wesson uh, m and version 2.0 for training purposes this is a huge detractor huge you can't have your range guy be able to work on these it is not good so and for the record i chose not to get into this i probably could have and i probably could have figured out what happened but i'm, I'm choosing not to because quite frankly a feeling that that screw in there is pretty soft metal. I'm 
make sure that they torque it down to a specific set and then also put some like Loctite on there. Was, it, I'm just guessing if I was manufacturing this with three pins here and then that screw, I'm putting Loctite on that screw just to keep people out. Anyway, this is my Walter PPQ uh, from T4E from Umarex going out the door. It sucks. <sighs> I really, really like this gun. And the fact that this is happening just hurts. So, bye guys.